Hi, my name's Andy Hollinghurst. I've been given an opportunity by Doncaster Council to talk about different art movements, and the one I've chosen is modernism. Now you might wonder why I'm stood outside this building. Well, modernism wasn't just about art, it was about lots of things, but it was about how society responded to things that were happening around them. And it took place at the beginning of the 20th century and ended around the mid part of the 20th century. Now we're here in May, at the end of a lockdown that's lasted about eight, year, eight weeks. There was a crisis in the country, a major epidemic has hit the whole world. And this is just like the time of the 20th century after the First World War, when artists decided that they wanted to respond to what was happening in the world in a different way. This is my interpretation of the co-op building. Now I'm stood outside the Corn Exchange which houses my studio but obviously at the moment it's closed because of the virus. The building we were filmed in originally, the co-op building, was built in 1937 and very much reflects the era of the time. It wasn't just a block of flats, it was built to look like a liner and was built on the end of what we call the Art Deco period. Now the artists who took up the mantle of this period of modernism, you've probably heard of them. People like Picasso, who painted in a very strange style, but was trying to put across messages through the way that he painted. There's a painter called Brecht, Salvador Dali, and later on, as the movement took place after the Second World War, there are artists who developed sculptors like Henry Moore and Barbara Hepworth and Pollock. Now these artists wanted to express how they were feeling about how society was changing and developing and it sparked different movements like Cubism and Surrealism which you've probably heard of. One of the artists that I want to focus on is a guy called Paul Nash. Now he was a war artist during the First World War. He was in the trenches but he didn't paint the soldiers and the battles. He painted the scene afterwards and we'll show you a picture of that and the reason he did that was to try and get over the message of the desolation of war but in the background you can see the light is beginning to shine so he's really trying to depict a picture from his painting more than just a pictorial interpretation now we're going to go inside the corn exchange and have a look in my studio some of the artists I talked about outside the corn exchange I'm going to show you some of their work now and explain how they became influential in the British modernism movement. So starting off with Picasso, he had a great influence on many British artists. This painting called The Three Dancers shows very elongated figures and that style was picked up by Francis Bacon and Graham Sutherland and later Henry Moore picked up that interpretation in some of his sculptors. It might be difficult to understand why he's painting like this, but if you study it, you can see that he's trying to tell a story in the way that he paints. Bottle of Fishes by Bracht illustrates a movement called Cubism. And what it allowed artists to do was bring lots of different viewpoints of a subject. And it opened up an infinite new possibilities for the treatment of visual reality and was a starting point for many abstract paintings in the future. So although Henry Moore, as you can see in this, is one of his sculptures, was um, very famous for his sculptures, he also did a lot of drawing during the Second World War in the underground stations, and they're worth having a look at if you've time. But this sculpture here is uh, called the Recumbent Figure, and he actually made it for a friend of his who had built a, a modernist building and it was built to go into the grounds of the building. And the building was in the South Downs and therefore the figure is undulating like the scenery around him. So you can see how the link between art and other aspects of modernism was seen in his work. So finally in the examples of uh, 
paintings from some of these artists. This is the picture I was talking about outside the Corn Exchange by Paul Nash. It's actually called We Are Making a New World. And I described how he wasn't depicting the battle, but the aftermath of the battle. Some people even think that the undulation on the ground are bodies that are hidden underneath the soil. But who knows, it's his interpretation. So now we're going inside the Corn Exchange to have a look at my studio. So back in the studio, it's a bit chaotic at the moment because I've not been in for a while. But if you have a quick scan round, you can probably see that some of my work is very much influenced by the things I've been talking about that are part of the modernist movement, trying to portray something more than just a pictorial image. Obviously some of them are quite pictorial, but others tell a story. So focusing in more on Paul Nash, following the First World War, he had a massive breakdown and moved to the Kent coast. And all the time, as I say, he's trying to send a message through his painting. So he painted the coastline, as you've just seen from those images. Well, I had a breakdown 12 years ago. And a few years afterwards, even though it was years since I'd studied anything to do with Paul Nash, I painted this picture here. And the similarity is uncanny and it was obviously in my subconscious but I was trying to portray not just the sea wall but the fact that in the distance there was a little bit light even though the picture is quite dark and then that's a, a thing that was running through some of my work during the period when I was poorly this is a painting of chroma and the colors and the style are moving away from the more picturesque to the more cubist style of painting but I'm doing that intentionally to try and get a message across. So this was the original painting I did and then I wanted to get more atmosphere in it and more of a sort of dream-like sensation in it so I focused in on the wall and I changed the colours behind it to make it more like a dream and that's how I got the final picture. Last year, towards the end of the summer, we went to Scarborough and I took a load of photographs. Lots of the architecture still in Scarborough is dated back to the period that the modernists were at the height. So I came back and painted some pictures that are quite pictorial. Um, and they do tell a bit of a story, but not quite as far as I wanted to go. So having painted these in a more pictorial style, I then culminated in this piece here, which depicts more of the modernist style. The reason for the painting was I had a brilliant time and I wanted to express to people how the old fashioned architecture is still there and yet it gives you the opportunity to wander through the different places that we went to. So people have said to me about this painting that they can see it's more like a dream but it also provokes great memories and it allows them to take a journey along the passages through to all the different things that they see in Scarborough and what's around the corner and all the things that are hidden and the excitement of the buildings and the beaches and the holiday resort. So that was my final piece at the end of it and he's very much along the modernist style. So as the century progressed, the 
aftermath of the Second World War, a major traumatic event again. The artist continued to try to respond to society in this modern way, and that's when we got the uh, advent of artists like Francis, Francis Bacon, Jackson Pollock, Hepworth and more, who were trying to put across their ideas in a less than pictorial way. And as they move towards the 60s, we get the event of pop art and Hockney and that period of style and even more abstract work coming through. So what I'm trying to say to people is, don't just dismiss a painting because you don't understand it, because usually there's a great deal of thought behind it. And as the uh, modernists in the early part of the 20th century were criticised because the paintings were very different to what people had uh, first understood as a good painting. Now as we reflect back we can see that they're actually trying to talk about the period of time that we were living in. So now we come to a time in our society where we've had a major crisis across the whole world and it's up to the artists to respond to it. So get your paintbrushes out and have a go and don't be afraid to look at the artists that I've spoken about and maybe they can influence you in the same way that I've been influenced by artists in the past. It's not copying, it's using their skills and talents to develop your own work. So thank you Doncaster Council for this opportunity and I hope it's helped to explain a period of art that is very dear to my heart.